morning everyone it's Tuesday the 24th of March 2020 <clears throat> third week of being sequestered inside your house lockdown this Thursday uh, here they're going to lock down uh, limit basically the entire movement of everybody they're gonna limit uh, to how people can go around to their work or go around wherever they need to go it's gonna limit that very much uh, if you're on the road the police will obviously stop you and ask you where you're going this week I have no physio because the clinic is closed Today, the reason why I'm on the road is I'm going to pick up some supply for my Lego, my Lego project from my supplier in Montreal because obviously the stores are closed and uh, the company closed the uh, parts, parts retail department. I, I understand one side because one point of this because uh, people have to go to work. What I don't understand from that company is how come it's not robot. Uh, it's, it's not operated by a robot like uh, Amazon. Anyway, so yesterday it snowed a lot. It's not about uh, three, four inch of snow, which is melting right now. Not a big deal. I cannot, it's, it's not comfortable enough to go outside and do a trial run with my gut device, but uh, I am gonna, I am gonna work on that later on. <sighs> These days, this, this situation is causing a lot, it's causing a lot of anxiety. Oh, wow, my speed limit, eh? It's causing a lot of anxiety and stress on my, uh, on me person. Wow, this guy is like seriously like doesn't respect the law. Some people are idiots like this. And uh, just to top it off, <laughs> there's a lot of people playing outside today. Uh, they don't give a fuck about whatever goes on. on. <sighs> what, what pissed me off the most is that they stopped the lottery, which is like my everyday things. I need my lottery. It's my it's one addiction, but it's part of my hope. You know, it's my everyday hope. And if I don't have that, I have no everyday hope. There is no hope for every day. There is no hope to win or anything better in the future. It's just like I'm stall at the point where, with what I have. No, no wishing for luck or anything else. It's just like you're stuck. That's it. There's nothing at all. No lottery. This, this is what <clears throat> here a lot of people see in the lottery. It's uh, it's hope. It's hope that they'll win and it's gonna keep them. It, it, that hope keep them going. And now they took that away from people. So instead of doing something positive by locking people down, they just made something worse. They just took whatever liberty left people had and old people like retirees and they took it away how nice it's ridiculous because they don't want the old people to go out of their house and catch the virus uh, yesterday I spent a good part of this out of the morning looking for new contact people that actually work and the health care and healthcare and a hospital. And I managed to land on five people, five ladies that were very kind. And uh, one of them caught the virus and she survived. But she said like it was hell on earth. She didn't know if she was gonna survive. Uh, she never felt, she never had something this bad in her life. So 
she was uh, she was very worried. And her dad, her dad, who is 84, survived just as well. But she said, like, whatever's going on, it's like contagious, but it can be survived. But there's a 50-50% chance that you guys survive. I told her I survived SARS. Uh, I will survive this if it comes over. And uh, so my point that saying that this was fake, I would say more it's it's control. It's not fake, but it's control. There's something behind it that they're making it. They're making it worse, and uh, the people in power, their their agenda 21. Now they want to implement. They, their their goal is to implement agenda 21, the end goal. I don't know if you ever watch Alex Jones, the end goal, but find that video and watch it. You will see what the end goal is. These eugenic bastards that want to control society and they want to remove people's freedom and they want to create a socialist society society they're they're they're, they're monsters literally like george soros the rockefeller all these people they're monsters they they're so out of touch of reality and they live in their little shelter world that they don't understand that they're not alone in the universe. They really don't care. And I'm pretty sure that above them, there's something else much more monstrous. There, there's something much worse above them. And uh, I'm not gonna go in detail what it is, but I can say that it has to go above, way, way above. And uh, one thing that we never hear or you don't ever see in the media is they're talking about space. They're, they never talk about space. And NASA, uh, they don't broadcast any more live feed uh, because there's more thing in space right now that they want people to see. A few times in the media, <clears throat> they leaked uh, stuff about UFOs. Phenomena in space that couldn't, they couldn't explain. And uh, one of them was, uh, one of my most favorite was a spaceship that was around Saturn's ring. And that spaceship was half time the size of Earth and length. It was cylindrical, but the length of it was half the size of Earth. It was humongous. For sure they don't leak or spread any information about all of these things. Because uh, they, they, they know what people that people would wouldn't accept this kind of information. They, they just couldn't gobble up what kind of information that would be. They wouldn't know what to do with it. They, their, their mind would literally explode. Uh, the masses, the sheep, their mind are very fragile. Uh, the moment there's a situation like now, they will either submit like little sheep that they are, or they're gonna go in mass panic. And uh, right now, if there was to be riots and stuff like this, I don't know how the police would deal with it. Because people always forget that there's more of us than there are more of them. There, there's more people than there are of police. And people always forget that if we would work together, we would accomplish great things. And uh, I keep telling people on, the, on my French blog that if 250,000 retiree people would, war, would march on the parliament and on that wall, and they would ask for the prime minister to quit his 
job, you wouldn't have a choice. They would march on Ottawa and they would start taking over. There would not enough be, there would, the police couldn't do anything against uh, you know, uh, retired people, like old people, like 60, 65, 70, 75, and 80 years old people. They wouldn't start taking their baton on them and start beating them. They would not. At least, I don't think so, they would. I don't think they would. But, like I say, as people grow older, they revert back as their childish behavior. And what you look, what you look towards your parents as the adult you had when you were younger, your parents, your dad, your mom, they're, they're no longer your dad, your mom. Their intelligence goes down and their judgment goes down and they're more of a sheep than anything else. Uh, my mom, uh, yeah, she's being careful. I accept that and I don't, but my mom is more aware than my dad of what's going on because she follows, she follows one of my friends that feeds her information that are quite useful to be aware, to be awoken. And, uh, She sees things for the big pictures, but she's afraid of talking against that. She's afraid of manifesting her unhappiness and try to rally people. Because if my mom would put her mind to it, she would be a great leader and people would follow her. But I smell like a french fry. Trump says that he doesn't want to keep the quarantine on. He doesn't want to keep the city locked down because he see how much of a nuisance that is to the economy. And uh, for me, if I was the government, uh, I wouldn't. I would take that off. I would stop that right away. And. At one point, there would be a limit of how many people can be infected. You know, I don't care if it's, if a case reached to 2,000 people, it doesn't matter. There's 8.5 million people here in Quebec. 2,000 people. That's less than a 1,000th of a percent. It does not matter. It's insignificant. Take the healthcare system in your own hand and say that if in case of emergency we will take your clinic and we will take care of the people that are infected until they're well. Uh, like, yes, it's people health, but so like uh, one said, one famous person says one time, the need of the many outweighs the need of the few. That means that there will be needs, there's their sacrifice that needs to be in order for the greater good. And that infection is so, so ridiculous. It's, it's just, the way it's been handled, it's utterly ridiculous. Like literally, utterly ridiculous the way it's been handled. It doesn't make sense. And like having people being sequestered at their home, doing nothing for weeks on ends, is not productive. It, it just setbacks everything. And there, there's no way to develop an immune system if you're not exposed to it. For me personally, I would take the risk of being exposed to it and have it and survive it then just stay at home doing nothing you know I, I've been out I've been off work because of uh, injuries for the last uh, since uh, the 28th of uh, February the 28th of uh, January since my nephew's birthday the 28th of January that's gonna be two months soon 
like at the end of this week it's gonna be two months I'm off and even though my arm is my shoulder is still injured I would go back to work I'm so fed up of being at home that I would go back to work and tolerate the pain but it's not gonna heal it's not gonna it's a big no-no at my workplace they close it down because everybody works next to each other within feet of each other uh, most of the staff they work shoulder to shoulder and uh, it's a closed environment so obviously yeah if somebody catches there everybody's gonna get it and people there are a most a most majority are above 40 years old so I think that they would survive but if their health is compromised, I don't know. One of my friends in China says that she say uh, she's a volunteer for the hospital, and she was wearing those, uh, like the military grade mask. And uh, she say that most people that were sick and that died, they were already old and compromised. Uh, people that are 40-ish, 45 plus years old, that they already have health issues due to, due to the high rate of pollution. Uh, retired people over there that are 60, 70, 80 years old. Uh, people over there are not in good health, literally. In China, they're not in good health. And right now, in Japan, it's being contained. Right now in Japan, they're not closing down anything because it's being contained properly. They say that uh, the few cases that were noticed inside the prefecture, the entire island of Japan, every one of these cases were contained right away. Uh, there weren't a moment notice that these people could walk free. And everybody coming in the country that were coming from somewhere else uh, told the security at the airport, since I was over there, there's a risk I was exposed. So on the, uh, on the airport of the multiple airport in Japan they have containment centers so everything over there is being contained and managed very well here in here in Montreal the Montreal the Montreal International Airport the doors are wide open people are coming in from vacation or anywhere else and they're they're not saying anything it's like nope it's like just come in if you're sick if you're carrying a disease just come in, no issue whatsoever. Anyway, I have to make a phone call. I'm going to leave you this on this note. I'm going to catch you all later. Have a good day, everyone, and best of luck.